Let's take a look at 555.35B, leakage current measurement. This is brand new to the National Code. So you can see it's a lot of text. Uh, oh, actually, not much text in the rule, but a lot of text and information. Note one and two. Here we go. Where more than three receptacles supply shore power to boats. Three receptacles. So more than three shore power receptacles. A leakage current measurement device shall be available and be used to determine leakage current from each boat that will utilize shore power. If I have more than three shore power receptacles, a leak current device shall be available to be used to determine leakage current from each boat that will utilize the shore power. Brian? So the discussion that was had that I heard about this was they're assuming that the feeder is going to have 100 milliamp protection and the receptacles on the pedestal are going to have 30 milliamp protection. So if there's more than three, there's the ability for it to be over 100 milliamps and you want to know what's tripping what. And, you know, that would make sense if it worked that way. Right. I mean, but you could have one that's probably going to be a lot more than 100 milliamps anytime there's a fault. Right. And it's going to trip. Who knows what it's going to take? So the numbers is really irrelevant, but it really matter. And it could be mechanically. Well, you know, if it's one, if it's two, all right, well, then when does it start? It starts straight. But the part that is a little confusing me is like, what the heck is a leakage current measurement device? Let me tell you what it is. An ammeter. Put it on there. You put an ammeter around those wires. How much current should be coming back compared to the current that left? The same. same amount. All amount. So if you put an amp meter around the power supply cord and you see that there's any kind of current, well, obviously that means what? Some is getting leaked. Some is getting leaked because we keep tripping the breaker. But the problem is that how do you, okay, the 100 amp main stripping in the, or the 30 amp, okay, the 100 amp main stripping, we know that the leakage current is greater than what? If it's 100 amp million. Greater than 100. 100. 100. Greater than but 100. we don't know, you know, anything well, yeah, more it than, is. Okay, we don't know, we don't know out of the, the 50 of them where it is. Is that right? Yep. But if we get lucky, which we're not ever going to get lucky, that when you have one boat that comes in and plugs in, you know the leakage current is going to be more than 30 milliampers, okay? Because there's obviously some kind of fault that's going to go to the water, and the water's going to carry more than 30 milliampers of current. That's a fact. Or is it going to trip the 100 breaker? So we have to, who was the last person plugged in a receptacle? I don't know. We came here two hours later. So it's not going to be easy. So what you have to do is I'm guessing disable the leakage protection at the feeder, then run around all these shore powers and try to find out which one is carrying current. So I've got your uh, leakage current meter right here. They actually make, and our friend uh, Ed was the one that told me about these. There's several leakage current amp clamp meters available that are specifically for this. So if you're somebody that's in the business, um, this is something that's designed to operate regularly in the milliamp range instead of fighting with something that may not be. So just a little bit more sensitive uh, you're saying, clamp meter. We'll just get an amp meter. Well, that's, no, nope. because clamp on amp meters do not always register accurately in the milliamp range. So this, right. this is designed to operate You're in the milliamp range. You get a milliamp range. meter is designed to operate, let's say, at 600 amperes, plus or minus 1%. You take a percentage of 600, it comes out to be 6 amperes, and so we can't predict whether it's accurate or not. So we get, read me, to, zoom in on, tell me what, what yeah. the heck are the features. So this is designed for currents up no, to 600. Zoom in bigger, give me features. I want to just see features. Oh, on the meter? Yeah, yeah no, features, right. Oh, this over there. Okay. Yeah, just yeah, white. So we can all read it. We don't have to care about the left side. Just there I'm, we go. I'm trying. There you go. Okay. All right. Check for leak. We're going to go back to top. Okay. Check for leak. Whatever. That means nothing. Yeah, Measures exactly. leakage current up to 600 milliampers with up to whatever. With a 10 micro, 10 micro, 10 micro resolution. Okay. 0.01 milliamp. So this is a 600 milliampere amp meter. Correct. Plus or minus some percentage. Measures currents up to 100 amps. RMS. Okay, so you can measure current at the same time. So, yeah, you could actually use it for. Okay, amp so they've designed it to get it. Okay, 
And me, okay, we care about the voltage measures. Hertz don't care about that. Measures resist don't care about that. Well, yeah, okay. I mean, just nice Basically, resistance and continuity. Oh, I see. You got okay. Yeah. You're not gonna if <laughs> you're not gonna meter. if you're not gonna be doing anything more than 100 amperes, and you're out there in the marina, nothing is really drawn more than 100 amperes, and you want to have a ohm meter and resistance. Or, or you know, I mean, maybe that's just your primary business is. You know, dealing with docks and marinas. You know what I'm right, saying? Right. Yeah, exactly. 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 This is just design applications. Yes. Like I said, it's very important that you show that picture again, my friend. It's very important that you get a true RMS leakage. Make it bigger. A true RMS. Make it so I can see that. So, okay, let's try it again. Okay. Like I said, it's very important that you get a true. RMS leakage current meter model 565. <laughs> Am I selling somebody's products? Is yeah, AMC. Say it's it's AMC. They're what good are guys. My buddies? Yeah, they're good guys. Okay, Fluke probably, maybe Fluke has it. Maybe they don't. I'm sure. I don't know. But you guys just got it. Points. You guys owe me something. <laughs> I don't know what I'm going to do with it. Whatever it is. Okay. What am I talking about? Let's get back to the rule here. Okay. So I suppose, okay, where more than three receptacles supply shore power to boats, a leakage current measurement device shall be available and be used to determine leakage current from each boat slip that will utilize shore power. So Dave, you go out there, more than three receptacles, you now know what a leakage current detector is. It's not an amp meter. It actually is a product designed to be sensitive down to those values to be able to measure that kind of leakage. Yep. Um, what do we do? And I don't it know what available. I don't know what available is. I guess that means that you could call te uh, testinstrument.com and say, "Hey, could you overnight me a leakage current? It's oh, available." Yeah. <laughs> yeah, you have it available. Hey, can you talk to the inspector? <laughs> it's available. I'm not sure what that means, but okay, yeah. whatever it means, it means. Okay, let's go on. Okay, got it. All right, information note one: leakage current measurement will provide the capability to determine when an individual boat has defective wiring or other problems contributing to hazardous voltage and current. I wouldn't say that. <laughs> That's too broad of a statement. All I can tell you is that it, it will tell you that there is current not returning back to the source, and it is happening in that boat. But you could ha have hazards inside the boat that it's not going to tell you, you know what I mean, that you get shocked. There's a lot of things that are hazards, but not leakage. But that's okay. I, I understand what they're trying to say, and that's cool. The use of a device will allow the facility operator to identify a boat that is creating problems. True or false? Yeah, that's true. true. Yeah, yeah, that's true. Okay. In some cases, a single boat may cause an upstream GFCI, or GFPE device protecting a feeder to operate even though multiple boats are supplied. In some case, a single boat may cause... Oh, yeah, is that true? Yes. Yeah. Right? Single boat. Okay, that's true. I'll get my buttons for you. The use of a test device will help the operator prevent a particular boat from contributing. True. Right? Yeah, it's exactly what you mentioned. If yeah. you have a product like that available at the dock, you can go to each feeder or well, each Well, no, not circuit. that, but all of a sudden the thing trip. Who is causing the fault? It just tripped now, right? And then we can go out there and then we saw that guy. He's still on the top and he's still, he just plugged it in and he's still whatever it's going to be. And everybody's going crazy. But, but, but with this device, I can at least, but how do I do that? You I, buy one. I would have to. No, no. no but how do I test it? You I, would have to take the GFP out of the main. To test it. Let me tell you, if somebody's smart, because I'm looking and I don't see one. With the leak. Uh, with the leak. If somebody's smart so that an electrician doesn't have to be called, they're going to make something that you can plug into the outlet that you can clamp a meter on. Because right now, you're going to have to remove a cover and be digging around wires. Those things already exist. Hold on. Hold on. I'm What's at called? a marina. I have. I forgot, but it already exists. Okay. I'm at a marina. There's more. Is there more than three or is there three or more? Three or more. Okay. Three or more. No, more than more three. Than three. So more four. than three. Okay, so four or more. Okay, if, if I'm at a marina and I have four, and I have this thing. I can't use it. You need to call an electrician. No, I can't use it because I have to disable the ground fault protection. So now let me see if I can come up with any kind of tool or any kind of thing. I can go to the end of the cord of the shore power. I can't go to all of them. What, what, are, what do you mean you can't use it? Well, I mean, uh, it's, the breaker's off. The breaker tripped. The, 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 the 200 amp oh, main. That's easy. <laughs> okay. When the breaker's tripping, that's easy. The problem is when you have somebody that's drawing. No, no, no. Tell me how easy. I'm telling you yeah, it's not easy. Because it's off. 
I know, but I don't know which one turned turn it back on. But I don't know which one. You just unplug them until you can turn it back on. Oh, That's oh, the easy oh, way. Oh, oh, you can do that. I mean, <laughs> oh, leak is curse detector. That means just unplug everything, turn on the breaker again, start plugging in one at a time. Which one ever trips it? That's the, that's that's the one. detector. Section 555.35B, leakage current measurement device. A lot of rules here, a lot of text here, and I'm not sure how much this actually can be any value at all. So let's take a look at what we're talking about here. The first rule says, where more than three receptacles supply shore power to boats, a leakage current measuring device shall be available and be used to determine the leakage current from each boat that will utilize shore power. A uh, couple questions we have here is like, what does it mean by available? Does that mean you call the guy up? Yep, we got it in stock. Does that mean that it has to be in an office? Does it be available all the times? These are all new rules. We don't have that worked out again. So what is the purpose of this? And what is this? But Brian, let's just look at what you have there as a graphic. This is an amp meter. Really, it's what it is. And, and how do you use it? Well, you take an amp meter and you put it around the short power cord. And if the current, whatever the current leaves, it's coming back. Is that, everybody agree with that? Whatever the current leaves, it's going to be coming back. But if current is going out and it's not coming back, well, then the amp meter is going to measure the fields that we're going to have ampere showing that there's going to be leakage. So it's a pretty simple thing. You say, wow, well, look at that meter there. Like, I don't know, it's a special. Does it have a, zoom in on Brian. Is there any way I know that this is a leakage current measuring device? In the graphic, look at that. Look at that. Well, it's it not very like good resolution. It just, it looks like a regular clamp. But clamp how would meter. I know that it's not a leakage, it's not an amp meter? That's what I'm trying to say. Is that identified some way? It has a special setting. That's what I'm trying to say. Oh, it yeah. a special if, setting right there. Yeah, I wish I could see a better uh, Which picture says here. milliamps. See? Yeah. It's, it's, Tell me, point, can you point out, Brian, with your mouse there? Yeah, right. I just want to say. Exactly. Yeah. I, I can't see your point. It has a special milliamp setting that the average tester doesn't say. Oh, so there's a, there on, on the, I can't see it, Brian. You're zooming away. Yeah, it's, it's right here. Can you zoom into the meter? Why don't you go to Google and type in? Yeah, I should probably just Google right there, it. Right there, just show Google it. Google it. Right point right there. Oh, okay, okay. Nice. Where the so, arrow's pointing on the meter. Okay, so where the arrow is set. So this meter has a special setting, and that setting is what? Like a milliampere, like a little MA? Yep. Mm -hmm. Where a normal meter would have it set to an, an ampere. Now, this thing, without getting in the specifications, is probably 100 amperes. And then let's get into those specifications, Brian. On the left-hand side, zoom in on the text here if you could there. It measures it down to as low as 0.1 milliampere. So it's pretty low. And Eric, tell us about this, this resolution. What does that mean by whatever that microampere, re what does that mean by resolution? Is that accuracy? What is that? Right, that, that's accuracy. So it measures down to, and we're going to play with units here, 100, 0.1 milliamps is 100 microamps. So it will measure down to 100 microamps and it is accurate to 10 microamps. Wow. Okay. My brain can't even, doesn't even understand those numbers. I just know that it's a small number and it has an accuracy of very high. But what about if I just use a regular amp meter? I mean, a, like a regular, okay, good, good uh, question there. A typical amp meter that you just buy at the supply house. Is okay. What, but that doesn't give me my setting for the milliampere, does it? Right, and it's and the accuracy is only down to 100 milliamps, and so the accuracy isn't is greater than what we're trying to measure. Okay. So you have to have a special meter. So if I have an amp meter, it'll measure down to 100 milliampers, but I'm trying to measure 30 milliamps to 20, some value less than 100 milliamp, and the accuracy is 100 milliampers. Right. So we're not even close. So you You're can't not even use close. a regular amp meter to be measuring leakage current to try to determine which boat possibly could be contributing to a problem. Okay, so, so let's review it again. You need to have a leakage current measuring device and it has to be available and to be used in measuring. Information number one, let's talk about what's the purpose of this device. Leakage current measurement will provide the oh, capability yes. to determine when an individual boat has defective wiring or there are other problems contributing to hazard voltage and current. The use of the device will allow the facility operator to identify a boat that is creating a problem. In some cases, a single boat may cause the upstream GFCI device protecting a feeder to op uh, the, the GFPE device protecting the feeder to operate even though multiple boats are supplied by the same feeder. The use of a test device will help the facility operator prevent a particular boat from contributing to hazards, voltage and current. And if you were paying really close attention to what I was saying, you have no clue what I just said. 
and it meant absolutely nothing. It was just a bunch of words. So I want you to read it on your own later on. And pretty much note number one, it means absolutely nothing because it's not effective. So you have this leakage current measuring device, goes down to 0.1 milliampers with 10 micro, micro, no, uh, micro, amps. micro amperes of accuracy. Great. The feeder just tripped out on the boat lift. I mean, on the boat dock. Uh, yeah, on, the, on the boat dock. Wow. This is some hot looking boats. Ooh, wow. Look over there. Ooh, yeah. Okay. So then you get distracted for a little while. You're kind of calm. It's beautiful day. Everybody's happy. Yeah, everybody's on the boat. They're all happy. Now, the, the feeder just dripped. And you're thinking, I got this meter. I got it. Hmm. How do I use it? Because there's no power. I know what I'll do. Because the thing, if I could put this on the cords, I could then find out which is the one that maybe caused the problem. I'll just disable the ground fault protection and I'll energize everything that we were supposed to be protecting. And maybe I'll, maybe I can find the problem before I kill somebody. Okay, so we're not going to be going in there and disabling the ground fault protection and bypassing it. So that's going to happen. Okay, so now we still have, we don't have any power. Oh, I know what I can do. I can unplug all the boats. Right? I unplug all the boats. And I put one in at a time. Bingo. The one that trips, there's the problem. So we cannot use this when there is no power. We have to use this when there is going to be power. So now, Joe... I'm going to take a chance and give you an opportunity to say something, and I really don't want to do this. I'm, Go ahead. Well, the manufacturer shows in the instructions that you can test it on the grounding electrode while the equipment is energized, and it'll check the leakage there. Okay, let's take a look at 555.35B, leakage current measuring device. Take a big pencil, pen, highlighter marker, put a great big X out of all of this. There is nothing in here that serves any purpose at all, and it can't even be accomplished at all. So I'm not even going to read the text. You can read the text if you want to. I don't really care. It tells you that you have, a, have to have a leakage current detector available, wherever available is, however that means, and it shall be used to detect leakage currents. One thing. Where more than three receptacles supply short power to boats, a leakage current measuring device shall be available and be used to determine leakage current from each boat that will utilize short power. Okay, Brian, show us what a leakage current measuring device looks like. And so we're gonna get that up. Now, let's understand mechanically. What it is is an amp meter. That's just a lot more accurate. An amp meter can go down to one amp, okay? And it has a range of about 100, it can go down to 100 milliampers, an amp meter can, what, 0.1, okay, of an ampere. And the, and, the ac and the accuracy is going to be 100 milliampers. Well, if you try to measure 30 milliampers to 100 milliampers, well, we can't have a meter that just goes down to 100 milliampers plus, and then the accuracy is plus or minus 100 milliampers. So if you go to a leakage current detector, if you take a look at this picture here, this device right here is designed, and, and you can tell what it is, Brian, just point to it if you could. There's, there's a setting, and where that little setting is set right now on that meter right there, it is set to milli. Amperes, normally set to amps, now it's set to milliampers, and that is accurate down to point, listen to this, it's accurate down to point one point. milliampers. That's point zero one. One hundredth of... Zero one. A point, it's, it's, it, it, it's setting down to point one milliampers. That's one tenth of one thousandth. Thanks of one ampere, and the accuracy is down to 10 millionths? Micro. 10, what is ten micro? micro? Micro is what? A millionth. millionth. Ten, 10 millionths of an ampere of 0.1 of a thousand. Listen, the, these numbers are just way too small. It really is really, really accurate. Clearly, it, you put an, they put that leakage current measuring device on a cable for a boat slip, or for a shore power, well, it's going to measure the current going out and the current going back. And it might say three, five, ten. Those are what? Milliampers. 
Now, if it goes more than 30, what's going to happen to the 30 ground fault protection device of equipment on that particular shore power? If it's more than 30, it's going to trip it. So if, if the shore power trips, then what do you do with the meter? Well, you can't do anything with the meter because the shore power trips. So you have to turn the power on, but it, you can't turn the power on because it trips. Well, what about if the feeder to the whole dock trips? Well, the feeder to the dock can be set up to how much? 100 milliamps. 100 milliampers. Well, if that thing trips, well, I can't go out and try to find out which boat caused the tripping because there's no power. And I can't bypass the protection device so that I can turn on power so I can find out which tripped. So the only way you can check to find out which of these little guys out here created the problem is because you tripped 100 amp main or 200, 400 amp main, whatever, you, 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 you unplug them all first, right? Brian, Eric, Joe. Everybody runs around, unplugs all the shore power outlets for all of them that's connected to that specific feeder. Then we turn on the breaker that supplies power to all the shore power outlets, and one at a time you plug it in. Did drip. Unplug it. Next one. Plug it in. Unplug it. Next one. You go to every single receptacle connected to that shore power feeder, and you will find the one that is tripping if there is one that has more than 30 milliampers because it would then trip the shore power outlet. Now, it's possible that, that when you plug it in, it trips to 100 amp. Well, that means it's more than 100 milliampers rather than just 30. Well, now we know the one. But if you plug each one in and you know, check each one and not one of them trips, you say, well, that's kind of strange. Well, they're all good. Am I right? They're all good. If you plug them all in individually without anything, they all trip. Then you start plugging, oh, I guess, you know, hey, you know, electricity works strange ways. Who knows how things work? You know, whatever it is. You're like, guys, it's magic. it was a lightning. It was, it was a bad thing. It was something crazy. And then you start plugging them in. And it all works fine. Then three minutes later, it trips again. Okay. We can't use a leakage current detector because the leakage current detector has to be used when there's power, but the power just got off. So you go back over again. And you know, here's the problem. So what is the problem if you unplug them all, turn the breaker back on again, plug one at a time, none of them trip, put them all back in again, and it trips again. What's the problem, Mario? There's an aggregate of milliamp leakage on each boat slip. And we can't check that because there's no power. And that, right. And, but let's assume we could check it. Let's assume somehow, you know what we'll do? We'll just bypass that ground for protection of equipment. We'll run power straight to it, hope that nobody gets killed while we're doing this. And we can run around all the courts and find out which ones they are. Oh, that one's five, that one's eight, that's ten. And we can mathematically add them all up, and they're more than 100. But they're not one of them is a problem. That, so now I don't know what you do in that case here. But guess what? We still can't use the leakage current measuring device, and we're not going to bypass anything. 